more the population. Well, the, the problem I have with the way that the, the, the we're talking about this issue as a society, I mean, not you and I, but it's like, you know, you go to the doctor and he goes, well, you know, you've got some serious problems with your legs. You go, okay, cool. So what do we do? And he goes, we need to chop your head off. Mm. You kind of go, well, first of all, that seems a bit extreme. And also that doesn't really make sense. How is that going to help my legs? And and so the issue with the conversation about not so much climate change, because as you say, you know, neither of us is denying that it's an issue. The, 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 the conversation doesn't seem to have any solution to the problem. Right. Mm. Like the, 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 almost all of the CO2 that we're going to be creating over the next many years, the increase in that is going to be coming from China and India. And yet we, we all, but it's like, you know, if, if I wash out my, you know, tuna tin that I'm saving the planet, it's not actually how it works, unfortunately. Right. So we have to come up with ways of making clean energy that is cheap enough that people in India and China who are desperately trying to industrialize a country are actually going to want to use it because it's cheap enough. I mean, I, I was having lunch with, uh, with a senior guy in India and he was telling me the stats. I mean, he's, he, it's amazing. So India became independent in 1947. Mm. Uh, do you, do you know what the average life expectancy in India was in 1947? Uh, 32 years old, man. You were never going to yeah. guess that. Yeah, I'll thirty-two again, years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know what it is now. Fifty something. Seventy-two. 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 Wow. And that's because they're industrializing, man. That's because they're using energy to make their people more prosperous. They are uh, electrifying the whole country. They've got electricity to every village now. Um, they are putting water into every small village and and bigger towns obviously right so they're trying to supply their people with water and energy now they need uh cleaner water than they've got at the moment that like that's a problem and that they're working on my point is like these aren't abstract things it's not like you can just like stop using energy and then everything stays the way it was no 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 we use energy to keep people alive and i think it behooves us to think about that instead of sitting in comfortable well-lit western houses and and going and well heated western houses by the way and going you know what we need to do is net zero that's not going to solve the problem and by the way it's not going to work democratically because as long as you live in a democracy once you put that pain on people in terms of the economics of it you're going to get you know a thousand bolsonaros elected because people are going to push back against it and this is by the way isn't my point it's um uh, Jordan Peterson just had him on this brilliant guy talks about climate a lot. I can't believe I'm Bjorn Longberg. Bjorn Longberg. There we go. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Bjorn. Uh, so that's a point that he made about, you know, the democratic impossibility of achieving these outcomes and the way that we're going about it. Right. So you gotta, we, if, and I say this, especially when people come after me and like, well, you're a climate change. I'm mm. not a climate change denier. I'm saying, even if we believe that climate change is the worst problem facing humanity right now, what you're doing and what you're suggesting doing makes no sense. Right. Can we talk about the way to actually solve the problem? Yeah. And for, for the Oxford audience, because I was speaking to young people, the point I was trying to make to them is like, you can do all the complaining and protesting and, you know, as Extinction Rebellion, these climate loons do in the UK, throw soup on paintings and glue themselves to roads and stop ambulances, get into hospitals and whatever. You can do all that. But you're not actually making anything better. No. You're just making yourself feel better. That's that's all you're doing, right? If you actually want to go and solve the things that you care about, whatever they are, I'm not telling you what you should care about. I'm not your dad, right? But if you want to achieve results in the world, sorry, there's only one way. This has only yeah. ever been one way. Learn, work hard, go and create and build things that change the world. It's the only way it's ever been done. It's the only way. You know, and even the tech, you know, even the the sort of social progress in in recent decades. Quite often, you find when you drill down to it, a lot of it's technological. I mean, people think you know, feminism liberated women. Feminism came along at a time when women are being rapidly liberated by technology. Right? Mm -hmm. the, the pill, domestic appliances, all these things that meant that women had to spend less time doing the stuff that they were forced to do because they couldn't control their reproductive system. Right. Now, that had a lot of consequences, positive and negative. We can talk about that. But the point is, that's what was liberating women to a large extent, right? And so technology progress of that nature is really the number one thing that you should be aiming at if you want to make the world better. 
make, make, make something, create something, solve the problem, right? If you think that, you know, plastic waste is a problem, go and invent some tiny little thing that reduces the plastic output of the world by 0.001%. Yeah. Do that. And if you do that, you're going to make way more of a difference than every single person has ever spent their entire life whining and complaining, right? That That's what I was trying to say to them. And I think climate change is a good example of that because how contradictory the things we're being told are, as you said yourself. And I was talking to a very senior scientist recently, and he was saying to me, like, we keep lying about the climate. And I was like, whoa, 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 you're like a scientist. What do you mean we keep lying about the climate? And he was like, the climate is a problem, mm-hmm. but we keep lying about the way to solve it. And I don't know why that is. But that is where we are. We keep being lied to about the problem uh, of how to solve the problem, even even if we acknowledge that the problem is real. So uh, that's what I wanted to aim at. But look, I'm not a climate expert, obviously. I, I was just trying to use an example that these kids would understand because they're all supposed to be terrified about the climate. 